All right, so now we have <clears throat> you know, our, our reds to greens. We can change the colors dynamically. We're actually applying this to the CSS. Um, we, we made some buttons here with some icons, uh, you know, and then we also have a, a table to print to so we can easily come down here and print our table. Hey everyone, this is my SharePoint Questions here. Today I wanted to go into more about things you can do with CSS and HTML and Power Apps. So we can change colors, we can let the user change colors, we can add like tables, we can make new buttons, make buttons look better than the normal power up buttons because they don't always look that great. But um, let's get into it and I'll show you some things you can do. So let's say we have an HTML text, right? So we can write some HTML right here between our two quotation marks. So let's start off with a table. A table and we can do, uh, let's say, table header. So table header is th, and we have to end the table header. Let's say the first is event name. And then let's do um, date, I think, th date. And uh, building name. So I'm kind of building this off what I did before. And let's give the table a style, uh, border 1px. All right, so now the, the table has a, a border. And um, let's see, we can add in here width 100%. Uh, there we go. And let's see, I messed up my border now. Let's see, uh, border needs a space in there. There we go. All right, so we have a basic table, right? So this is HTML. So then we can do TR, which means we're starting on a new line, and TD. So I'll just put in some placeholder text. And this is just basic HTML. TD uh, text three. All right, so we have a basic HTML table here. Now let's say, you know, some people like the way really simple tables look, and we could actually create a print button, right, to print this table. So let's add a button here, or just one button. And let's say it prints, and on select it prints. Now that we have our print button, you can see if we click print, you know, it, it shows the form up here and then the HTML text. Well, there's something that we can do that I learned is that you can go to the parts that you don't want to show on printing. So we go to the visible property of our form and what we can write in here is not parent.printing. And so let's put that on all of our buttons so visible of our button, this button here, and the print button. All right, so each of those parts, the form and these three buttons, all have not dot, uh, parent dot printing. So now when we click on the print button, we can see it just shows our HTML text. And uh, I could just see, you know, some people kind of like the simplicity of a HTML table. And so you could do this um, with your text. So now we have our placeholder text, right? Let's, let's say we wanted to populate that based on our selections. So we have event name in our HTML text, right? So in the placeholder text, what we can do is we can write an ampersand or actually a quotation and then ampersand. And in the ampersand, we're gonna do our event name uh, text part. So this is in the data card. So we can see uh, text uh, event name dot text. So if we click on here on the event name, you can see that's actually the name of my text here. So if we were to type in, let's say the event name is um, music theater. You can see it's now populating in our HTML text. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for date. So we'll do and or 
quotations and our date. And so th this, these are just examples. I'm sure um, you might come up with your own uh, solutions that you want to do. But this is just what I came up with rather quickly. All right, so now we have a HTML text and whatever we type in the form or we're selecting the form, it's going to say um, the building names, the date, and we could even center this if we wanted to, but some people like the left sign align. You know, we can write the HTML text how we want. And then when we click the print button, we have a nice little um, table here that people can print off and it, it can look a little bit neater than using the data table in Power Apps or, or just printing off straight from the form. So that's one use case that we could use CSS for. And we're using variables inside the CSS now. So, you know, we have the variables in here, which are not really variables, but technically they're variables. We're using the text and the dates and we're inputting them into our table. Now, another idea for using CSS is to create buttons. So instead of having a submit button, let's change this to something that looks a little bit better than Power Apps does for us. So let's create another HTML text, right? And this is going to be a button button. We'll just make it simple at first. So now we have a, a button, right? And it says click me. So that's HTML. So let's add uh, an icon in here. So the way I would do this is I would get it in embed code. You could probably save your own icon somewhere, right? But we always have Google. Let's check out Google. All right, so I'm in Google. Uh, we have a nice Christmas theme. I, I guess it's, you know, most people are hanging up their lights after Christmas now. So let's go ahead and type in embed icons HTML. So we're going to search embed icons HTML. The first thing that comes up for me is icons8.com. Uh, this, this website can be really helpful. Um, there's all kinds of icons in here more than Power Apps has. So um, let's see if we can find something. How about this one right here? I just, I don't know, it has this little guy. So in here, we can see that it has an embed HTML. So all we gotta do is click on that, highlight the embed code so it's copied for us. Let's go back to Power Apps. All right, so in Power Apps, inside our button, we can put that embed code and it kind of messes up at first because it has double quotations. Let's put it to single quotations. All right, so now we have a button. It says click me. Maybe we want to center that. So let's go ahead and center the button. All right, so we have a button. It's centered. And we could, uh, you know, kind of work with the button if we wanted to. We could, uh, I think, if we do style, um, padding, uh, let's see, 10px. Let's see if that works. There we go. Kind of give it a little bit of padding in there. So this is going to be our new submit button. Let's see if I can give myself a little bit more space. All right, and instead of click me, let's say submit. All right, so we have a button here that submits. So instead of submitting, we want to change the visibility property to the not printing. And then if we want to submit, let's get the on select from my submit. So now we can submit form here with on select. All right, so now we have a, a nice looking submit button. Uh, it works much better, looks much better than Power Apps does with their submit. Um, there's some more things we can do. Let's say we had, uh, you know, we wanted to change the color of things. 
let's say we had a linear gradient. So I've showed this in a previous video before, but I'm going to make like a linear gradient uh, top toolbar up here. So let's do an input or a text, I mean, another HTML text. Uh, I'm just going to copy paste this from a previous video I had. So it adds a uh, like a linear gradient to the top of your power app here. I'm just going to put it up there and I'm going to send it to the back actually. Send it to the back. All right. So now we have our uh, our submit button and our new button. You know, we can change the new button too if we wanted to have um, a new button, but I'll remove that submit button. So we have our two buttons, right? This highlights submit new. I mean, we're making Power Apps look, it doesn't look like Power Apps anymore, right? That's, I think that's the point. That's what people like to do is uh, make Power Apps not look like Power Apps anymore. Um, let's see here. And if you can make Power Apps not look like Power Apps, I think we're successful. A lot of people do that with SharePoint too, right? They had all this CSS and these master pages to their to their SharePoint. So let's just do a, a new form too. I'm, I'm just I'm just curious. I just want to make another new button, uh, another icon here. I'm gonna grab this one. Uh, let's go back to Power Apps and create another. HTML text and pretty much I'm going to copy this same one paste it in here but instead of that we're going to change the button so let me get back to I'm going to click on the embed HTML I'm going to take that link go back I'm going to replace the HTML text here it has the double quotes All right, except for it's not going to say submit, it's going to say new. All right, so we have new and we have submit. So I'm going to remove this button. Um, that looks about right. So I, I can get a new form and I can type in, uh, let's see, uh, Christmas parade. We can say it's you know right before December on the 19th, and this is outside. So it's populated our HTML. We have new buttons here. We can click submit, and this is going to submit my form to SharePoint. So if we go to SharePoint, and we can see that it has now updated my Christmas parade um, outside and the date. And we can click our new button and select a new form and it has um, our data here. So let's kind of just repopulate it. We also have our print button. We can print, oh, we didn't put the new button. We didn't uh, set up the, uh, the visible property on it. I can do that real quick. So during printing, it's not visible. And someone was asking me how can we change the colors dynamically, right? So let's say we had a linear gradient and we wanted to replace these colors. I think if I typed in red, would that work? Yeah, that, that works. So let's say we have another drop down. Let's make it a drop down input drop down. And let's just give it a, a few different options. Let's just say uh, red, blue, green, yellow, orange, white, black. There we go. So we have another drop down here, and this drop down is going to be called drop color. Now let's dynamically change the colors here. So in this linear gradient, let's change this with an, uh, you know, put our end of our quotations here and then an ampersand um, drop color dot text ampersand with more ending the quotes uh, drop color dot selected dot value. 
It's actually what we want. All right, so it's already changed. You see that. So dynamically, we can actually change the color of our CSS with this drop down. And I'm, we could replace this with the RGBA um, coloring, but I mean, look at that. Isn't that neat? We're actually. Um, we could probably save this, you know, put this in like an admin page and save it to uh, SharePoint, you know, just I don't, there's there's got to be some reason someone out there would want to change the color. Maybe they want to change it for Christmas and they want to have Christmas colors. So you have the green. Let's change the let's add one more input drop down. And I'm going to give it the same items, right? And then in the CSS, we're going to do the same thing. I'll take this and I'm going to put it at the end here. And we're going to call this drop color two. And we'll go back to our CSS drop color two. There we go. So let's say we, you know, we wanted like some Christmas colors. We can, we can change the colors to red, green, green, and then the middle color. We can actually remove that. Let's let's go ahead and remove that so it, it doesn't exist anymore. There we go. All right. So now we have, <clears throat> you know, our our reds to greens. We can change the colors dynamically. We're actually applying this to the CSS. Um, we, we made some buttons here with some icons, uh, you know, and then we also have a, a table to print to so we can easily come down here and print our table. You know, we would hide the rest of this HTML text and those buttons. I showed you how to do that. But um, that's the power of CSS and HTML and Power Apps. I hope this is helpful. Uh, let's make your apps beautiful. So thank you guys. If this is helpful, if this is making your apps amazing, please like and subscribe. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, thank you guys for your support and everything. Uh, this is my SharePoint questions. I'll see you next time. Thanks.